when you've been making sports cars for as long as Ferrari has, and it was seven decades last year, you're bound to have become quite good at it. Renault's 488 GTB is outrageously ballistic and joyously exciting proof of that. The company's pedigree in modern drop-top grand tourers like the new Ferrari Portofino is, shall we say, somewhat less convincing. It introduced the Portofino's predecessor, the original folding hardtop California, its answer to the Mercedes-AMG SL63 and Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet, 10 years ago. But straight away it became clear that the prancing horse was dipping an elegant equine ankle into waters that couldn't even be thought vaguely familiar, even with the existence of likes of the 575M Super America and Daytona Spider nestled deep in its back catalogue. The task was to reconcile opposing requirements by creating a car with the dynamism and excitement of an authentic Ferrari but also the versatility, refinement and convenience necessary of a car you'd use every day. To do it, also, in something burdened with the added mass and structural compromises of a folding tin top convertible. Not easy. The company's main reason for taking on the challenge, meanwhile, was that a really successful effort could probably double the breadth of the base of Ferrari's sales volume pyramid. But the California story didn't pan out like that. Although the car was revised, lightened, tweaked and turbocharged through the course of its life, it never quite delivered success on that scale. While it's very rare indeed for Ferrari's V8 mid-engine cars not to hit 1,000 sales in a calendar year in Europe, the California only cleared that threshold once. Time to take a fresh swing at it, then. The Portofino, like its more export market savvy model name, is all new. The car's styling may be characteristically dressy, but it undoubtedly makes for a much better proportioned and visually appealing car than the California was. With the roof up, there are even shades of the Daytona about the Portofino's recumbent silhouette. Underneath the attentively creased body panels, meanwhile, there's a body in white that's at once lighter and 35% more rigid than the California's. The car's suspension has been stiffened, its magnetor heological adaptive dampers retuned and its steering system both quickened and switched over from hydraulic power assistance to electromechanical. Under the bonnet, a reappraisal of induction and exhaust design of the car's 3.9-liter, 90-degree, flat-plane crank, twin-turbo V8, together with the adoption of some new internals, conjures an additional 38 bhp of peak power. The Portofino's V8 is unusual among the latest force-fed equivalents because the exhaust sides of its cylinder heads are the outer ones, and so its turbos are mounted low and wide rather than in the configuration that Audi and Mercedes-AMG call a hot V. Ferrari says it experimented with both layouts but this one package is best in both the Portofino and 488, and delivers less exhaust back pressure and a lower center of gravity than the alternative would. And while Ferrari may only have liberated 4 pounds foot of additional torque here, given that it has also saved 80 kilograms in the car's curb weight, this car trumps Aston Martin's equally new DB11 Volante on power to weight ratio by more than 75 bhp per ton. Remember when Merno's idea of an infotainment system came with a 2 inch wide monochrome display strip and navigation instructions harder to follow than the thinking behind Donald Trump's international trade policy? How things change. The Portofino's driver gets the familiar duo of five and color instrument displays flanking the central analog rev counter, which remain a bit busy and unintuitive, and the passenger gets their own widescreen touch-sensitive display too, though only as a 3,300 pounds option. But the whole collection is dominated by a 10.3-in central display that carries navigation mapping you can easily browse, that displays routes that you can easily follow, and that generally collects digital consoles for the car's variously configurable systems that make mastering them uncharacteristically straightforward. For a convenience-minded GT car, that's not a bad start. Here's another surprise, comfy leather seats with extendable cushions which, fair's fair are certainly less of a steep drop to get into than the 488s. The Portofino's cabin remains a way off the level of Mercedes-AMG or Audi for perceived quality, but it gives little up to either McLaren or Aston Martin.